Hello everyone, and welcome back to the high mountains of our South American jungle expedition, where our llamas are prancing about, oh, hello, hello llama, hello, where our llamas are prancing about atop their little hills and getting ready for a very special expedition today. Because today, my friends, I have high hopes that we are going to be able to set forth and find the giant anteater. The time has finally come. We have quelled the laughing riots over in the laughing court. We have managed to find a beautiful melanistic black jaguar to join our very lovely princess and queen at hopefully having many wonderful babies. There she is, she's taking a nap over here. Uh, hopefully having many wonderful new jaguar cubs pretty soon. We have gone ahead and we have designed some excellent new fantastic looking ruin pieces for our educational signs. We even found spots where we're able to hide a speaker telling you all about the jaguars inside of a jaguar like statue, which I think is so epic. And we have more of our golden tree frogs than I can shake a stick at, breeding inside of the many, many temples and shrines that we have made for them. With so many of these golden red-eye tree frogs, we finally have the pieces of the missing puzzles to be able to set off into the jungle and to find the animals who we are hoping to be able to um, go ahead and breed up. So I'm pretty excited. Today is the day. We're gonna go head out. We're going to use the mini golden frogs that we're saving to find pieces of the puzzle. And uh, we're gonna get ourselves a giant anteater. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited. I'm really hoping we can put the giant anteater somewhere up here and we can start carving into the side of the mountainside and eventually have it connect up with this giant area where I wanna put the capuchin monkeys. So fingers crossed there. Let me go ahead. We're actually going to, <clears throat> We're going to have, oops, let's see, use auto paint, there we go. We're going to have, you know, the mountains part a little bit more, a little rumble, maybe an earthquake or two <laughs> to make a little bit more space so that we'll be able to have there a nice comfortable spot for the giant ant eater to arrive and make a home in. Carving into these mountains really is like the only way to make this map, <clears throat> excuse me, this part of the adventure traversable. There. But it is a fun challenge too, because I feel like the people who lived here eventually would have started chipping away at the mountains themselves as time went on. So we're just excavating to slowly but surely uncover their sprawling city inside of the mountain. All right, we'll push some of that back too. There, I like it. We might even pull like a bit of an overhang over like this for the ant eaters, because I was thinking about making it so that we'll have like, there we go, like a really nice hard shelter for them. Go away, go away. We want to push this up a little, just a teensy bit there. Like a nice hard shelter for the ant eaters back here. Uh, oh, there's even, oh no, I've actually gone too far. We've gone too deep and we have cracked into the bottom of the, the ancient temple tunnels down there. Whoops, we'll just casually seal that back up. I hope the ant eaters don't dig through there. But I actually wanted exactly this where we could have a fun spot that makes a hole right there, but then still plenty of room to have a little bit of hard shelter over here. There we go. And then we're going to turn this spot into like a little waterfall where we'll have some water cascading from here down in here. We might even have it coming down towards here and trickling into this spot, which is where we have a old temple ruin that we stumbled on. And we'll surround the holes with a whole bunch of the mossy rocks and things so they don't look nearly so awkward. Speaking of the mossy rocks, if we're gonna put the ant eater in, oh, oh, there's some butterflies we could just have floating through the air. I was thinking about putting this down over here as well to have a nice decorative spot for the ant eater. Hopefully that'll be enough room for them. We'll expand this a little bit more just in case. There we go. Yeah, there we go. All right, and then we wanna make a path climbing up the mountain. 
And let's shrink this down just a teensy bit. One more. There we go. Let's not snap this to barrier. And we're gonna go up. This is gonna be a picnic zone right down underneath. And then hopefully this will be, here, let's back that up again. Yeah, hopefully this will be enough up that they'll be able to get to the anteaters, no problem. All right, up we go, some more and some more. Down and we'll make a nice little pavilion. Swirly do. Oh, I love it when I can make a perfect circle. It is so hard to make a perfect circle. And ta-da! Hopefully this will make a good anteater viewing. Good anteater viewing spot to begin. Okay, careful, careful. Yay! Two perfect circles! Oh, my happy day. And then I think if I come over... Flatten, flatten. Think nice, flat, even spots. There. And I think I'll leave the rest to figure out, like, how big to be able to make the anteaters home. Because <laughs> I don't know how big the anteaters, like, actual habitat needs to be. So this is probably plenty. And I'm hoping people will be willing to walk up to see the anteater. And eventually, this, like, they'll have other paths I'm hoping can even, like, wind around here and walk up to the capuchin monkey. Uh, but here, that's, that's some of the plan. I kind of wanted to leave, they would be really fun to leave these butterflies floating in the sky, but we won't. All right, so let's find ourselves an anteater. Let's make sure we have enough space to invite in the giant anteater. Or is it going to be under giant? Yep, giant anteater. Look at that. Wow. The giant anteater is a medium-sized mammal that lives in the grasslands and forest of Central and South America. As the name suggests, the species feeds almost exclusively on ants and termites, detecting ant colonies by smell, before digging a hole to feed using its long, sticky tongue. The giant anteater has a very distinctive appearance, with a long, tubular snout, small eyes and ears, stocky limbs, yes! Queen K is expecting offspring! Okay, we'll learn more about the stocky limbs of the giant anteater in a second. Oh yeah, you guys! We're gonna have some melanistic jaguar cubs. We're gonna go ahead and send King Anubis into the trade center to rest, because he's much older than Queen K, and to find his own territory before sneaking back around. <clears throat> and we'll keep an eye out on those uh, melanistic jaguar cubs. But all right, so let's see. The giant anteater has a very distinctive appearance, with a long tubular snout, small eyes and ears, stocky limbs, a coarse mane, and a thick, bushy tail. They also have a characteristic pattern across their body. White front legs, gray muzzle, and black stripes across their chest, throat, and shoulders, with bristly black to brown tails and manes. And I have actually had the honor at the Detroit Zoo of seeing a giant anteater in person, and that tail is a lot more bristly than you think. It looks soft and, and like like a cat tail, but it's actually a lot more stringy and bristly. So bristly is a great adjective to describe that with. Oh, whoops, I forgot to see what size they need. So you can have up to one male and one female at the same time. Their mating system and dominant system are unknown. They are neutral in their relationship with humans. They are seven feet long. <laughs> Pardon? That's huge! And they need at least 7,104 square feet. So I hope I have enough room to be able to create that for them. Let's go ahead and see. All right, here we go. We'll use a null barrier to begin with. Just at first. 7,000. Hmm. We might be a little bit tight on space, but we, we have plenty of the mountain. We can go ahead and give them more mountain space. I'm not too worried. All right. We can even give them like sloping upward mountain space. Okay, there's that. Also, if we put a giant anteater over here, we probably absolutely will need to put <laughs> um, a keeper hut somewhat closer. There we go, 8,000 square feet. Um, it might be a little small for the anteater still. So you know what? Let's make it a little bigger. 
I do want to make it a little bit bigger. Because I worry that they won't have enough room. And I do want people to be able to see the anteater, but come on. Alright. Let's go up. So we're going to bring this level up. In an attempt. There we go. Barrier. Barrier. And then let's actually push this back a little bit. Huh, actually that'd be kind of pretty to make it just sort of look like the rocks sort of fell in. We could do a column right here. One second. Okay, I need a little bit of a bigger column. Up, up, up we go. I want to find the sand eater. I want to find the sand eater. Okay, come on. Don't be shy. We need almost there. We made a stalag tight and a slag might meet together. And now they have formed a little column. There. That definitely gives that a little bit more of a viable appearance. We can even chip this back a little bit. There we go. Fun. All right. Meanwhile, let's come over here. And I think we've made a nice new section to expand the anteater's home a little bit. I want them to be happy. I want them to flourish. And I want them to, I mean, I guess seven feet is not a small creature. So I want them to feel like they have enough space that they'll have babies of their own. And those babies can grow up and become members of our zoo. That's the, the big hope and the goal. Members of Zudesia Zoo in the, the far future. All right, how are we doing now? There, 10,000 square feet. That's a lot better. I think that that's gonna give them a lot more space. Now we just need to come through and figure out what part of the barrier to make into what. So this whole section right here, definitely one-way glass if you ask me. Why is it obstructed? Who knows? Because it wants to be a pain in the rump. All right, let's grab this. At least I have a chance to make it curved in the right places then. Just a gentle curve. Ooh, that would be really good actually, but then the path wouldn't connect. One way glass. All right guys, we're getting close to having an anteater. And we'll curve that like so. I'm pretty sure an anteater would eat its way out. <laughs> like, no pun entirely intended, but eat its way out. Uh, so we're going to use logs of a hedge fence. So we're going to go ahead and put down just a couple log fences. <gasps> Queen Kay is about to have her offspring! Oh, you guys. Oh my gosh, she is beautiful. I am so glad we have taken out so much of the mountain. I know that seems really weird to say. But I'm so glad we took out more of the mountain because we can actually see the sunlight in the jaguar habitat now. <gasps> and she has come here behind the bamboo. Oh, over by the sprinkler. Everybody up there is going to be able to see her give birth. <gasps> Will we have a melanistic cub? We have one baby, you guys. Are we going to have more? Two babies. Yay. <laughs> All right. So we have two beautiful babies. Hopefully they're healthy. Yes! Healthy golden babies! One is a baby girl and one is a baby boy. Oh, wow. And isn't this just stunning? Being able to see mom and babies crawling through the bamboo. I love it. All right, so let's take a look at this little guy who is going to become a prince for prince forget are a little male named after Forgetzen. And Forgetzen, I'm so happy that you like our hyenas. Oh, and Lotus is about to mature right now too. Yes. And welcome, welcome, welcome. You are a gold level little boy, Jaguar Prince, who is going to be bigger, more long lived, more fertile than usual. Very nice. And then we have the sibling over here. Let me pick one of your guys' names again. 
as one of the names that we could use for our wonderful new addition. And as usual, guys, if you want to end up becoming one of the animals here in our mini adventures, all you have to do is go ahead and leave your comments and the random comment generator might pick you. And this is actually going to be Princess Ruby. What a beautiful name from Miriam. So Miriam, thank you so much for that name list. I think Ruby is a perfect name for this little one. And she is extremely long lived. She's going to be one of the biggest jaguars we have ever had. She's going to be very fertile. She's going to have a lot of immunity. And I'm very curious. Let's actually take a peek at her dad. Her dad has had a ton of melanistic siblings and a ton of offspring before we have actually had these two. Look at how many babies he has had. Holy cow. But it looks like there might be a special genetic identity that could potentially have the gene that we're looking at that could have the the melanistic gene that we're not that we don't have. I think it's like CB like the CB gene. So we might need to see, like it, it would be really cool to take some time one day to parse down the genetic identity of the animals that end up having these, like is it a DD gene? And you need to breed with like another animal that has D in order to produce, like there's our immunity gene. Oh, look, so you have fertility and immunity genes are two different things. So it'd be interesting if that has anything to do with a combination of what kind of coloring you end up with so hmm very curious very curious i have no idea but all right so we have two new baby jaguars they are not melanistic but this is just the first of possibly many litters between our new king and queen and speaking of the first of many let's see i'm gonna come over here really quickly i'm gonna remove this statue because i actually think this would be a great spot to just very gently put a waterway. Some sort of, yeah, just like a little water spot where hopefully our wonderful anteaters will be able to drink from. And I can bring in one of these really cool new ponds we made that have frog song in them <laughs> to, uh, to like help highlight that little pond. But all right, so speaking of frog song, let's gather up six of our golden red-eyed tree frogs and have them help us discover the missing pieces of the treasure map that will guide us to our very first giant anteater. One, two, three, four, five, six. I just grabbed some random ones so that we'll, we'll have a little bit better luck. All six pieces, we only need six golden red-eyed tree frogs to have the chance to find them. And, Let's do this. I'm so excited. Giant anteater. There you are. Who's available? Oh, like nobody. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Giant anteaters are apparently pretty uncommon. We're going to try to pick the healthiest one we can find. Um, which looks to be these two. A dite. And, well, they'll have new names when they come. Uh, but you know what? Let's let's adopt two of them then. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. There, we did it. We need to be careful not to go through too many of those too quickly. <gasps> the Amazonian giant centipede has just died, which while sad means that we have actually freed up an exhibit space that we can add in now. All right, we're gonna add in this anteater and this anteater and let's go fetch our new giant anteaters and see what we can do for them one two so we're gonna move add you in here and then we're gonna go ahead and move add you in here there we are oh i'm very excited also we need to fix the glass so that it faces the right direction <laughs> Yet again, yet again. Okay. There we go. Now, th they won't be disturbed by the people. People can come up here to see what the giant anteaters are up to, I hope. Uh, and then the giant anteaters should hopefully have another spot back here. Where I was going to make just a tiny, tiny little spot for water. 
That's obstructed valid. Okay, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Let's see, valid. Oh my gosh. Like, that's all? That's not much, but I guess I did say a tiny little spot. <laughs> and then let me grab special effects. Large. Waterfall bottom. Waterfall midsection. And there we go. Just a nice spot there. And a nice spot there. And where's the waterfall top? Top, top, top. Top. No murky. Mid. Rapids. There we go. All right, and we'll tidy that up in just a little bit so you can't see the water spot. But all right, the ant eater is apparently in here. Oh, hello! Hello, you two! Hi! You're up on top of here, huh? Are you stuck? Oh my good gravy, I think our ant eaters might be stuck. I'm going to scoot this back just a little bit to free them. There we go. Oh my gosh. Hi, you two! Let's move you on over. Not enough space? Alright, what if I delete this massive thing? Let's just check. Will that be enough space? That actually is a lot better for them. <laughs> Alright, we'll decorate we'll decorate some some other way for our anteaters. But look at these guys! So we need to start getting them taken care of right away. I need another keeper. Let's go ahead and let's actually check how many llamas I have right now. We have six llamas. How many staff members do I have right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <gasps> oh no, eight, nine, ten. Oh no, we're down three llamas. I need more llamas so that we can have more staff members. Oh my gosh, look at these guys. They're just sitting here. Okay, thank goodness we had a staff member already come and check on them. We need to start doing some vet research with our frog biologist Yuleni on the giant ant ears. Look at these guys. All right, let's see if we can make them happy. They need a little bit more, just like a pinch more land area to navigate. They're also going to need some cleaner water. So let's actually put this down over here. And I'm just gonna straight up remove this then and give them a bit more land to be able to navigate. There you go, guys. Let's see what else I can do for you. So you need a little bit more space. They need just a little bit more land space that they can walk around on. So I'm probably gonna need to like peck away at this mountain really quickly. Let's do that real fast because not having enough space is a sad thing. All right, hang in there. I can totally fix this, we've got this. You need more space? Well, lucky for you, I am a creator of earthquakes. <laughs> All right, let's push these all in. Oof. Oh, that's much nicer. A little bit of sunlight that I can see. And then, actually, this would be a really cool way. Oh, let's keep this up. To be able to come over here and make a bridge that looks over the anteaters up here. <gasps> That'd be really nice. So people could come up this direction and check them out from that side. I really like that idea. And then we'll give the anteaters more room over there. And that'll get people up so that they can start working their way to the capuchin monkey area that we're building. Huzzah! These zoos do become sprawling, huge projects that become like your pet project that you take care of, that you love, that you nurture, and that you become so proud when you're able to make them work. <laughs> All right, and then let's grab... I need some nice moss rocks. And do I ever have some nice moss rocks over here? Nice. We're gonna grab those. And we're gonna actually stick them right down here as a way to make sure the anteaters don't climb on out and add in some beautiful cliffside spots right there. All right, is that enough for, whoops, I forgot. No, no, I did the barrier, thank goodness. Is that enough for you guys? Yay, we gave them enough space now, you guys. So let's see what else we can provide them. They need some food and species toy enrichment, and they are going to need a way to continually get clean water. Let me check the clean water thing. Nope, nope, nope. 
We need a spot. Possibly. Yeah, possibly pushed down in here. Ooh, cool. Ooh, cool. That would actually work really well. Hang on, guys. I have an idea. We need a spot over here to put the water generator tucked inside of the water from within the mountain. Ha ha. Let's see if people complain about the noise then, shall we? All right. And then we need it facing this direction. And I can just put it right there. And we'll have to assign our mechanic to it pretty quickly. Dangerous Prince forget how on earth he has actually managed to more or less escape. All right, he's back in now. So Prince Forget is our newest escapee. Uh, let's see, we're gonna name him Prince Forget Root because he actually found a way out. Uh, or how about Prince Forgotten? Forgotten Path, there. The Prince of the Forgotten Path and he found the way through. There we go, so now the anteaters will have nice and wonderfully clean water, but the guests will not be able to complain because we have hidden the thing away. And we'll even hurry and assign it. Look at us, we're finally getting on top of a few things. There's always so much to do. We will go ahead and assign it to the Golden Frog Cave. There. Spots. And... Hopefully a mechanic will occasionally visit that. Do we we have a wandering mechanic named Mountain Climber George. He should take care of it. But all right, so let's see if we have anything to offer the anteaters in terms of environment. They're really laid back. They prefer zero to 100% tree coverage. They're happy with all of the plants they have right now. Uh, they would love to have a lot more soil. So we can go ahead and provide a little of that and more soil back here. But mostly they just, they just like short grass over long grass. <laughs> Voila! Wow! Anteaters! They're very chill. I like them. <laughs> and we'll provide them with whatever enrichment items we can to try to make them a little happier. But alright guys, we'll take more care of the anteaters and try to sort out the constantly breeding tree frogs next time. And we have a little bit of a alamining situation because we need to have more llamas in order to have more staff. So if you guys could do please leave a like for the seven foot giant ant eaters that have just arrived as well as the newborn jaguar cubs and if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures do please consider subscribing but most importantly my friends stay curious and I'll see you guys next time bye bye